Laura Lynn Hughes has seen both sides of the abortion debate. When she was pregnant at 15, she chose life for her baby girl. Years later, that same daughter made a very different choice. Author Laura Lynn Hughes was a victim of sexual abuse at an early age. The pain and shame born out of that situation proved to be a very challenging part of her life. As a teenager, she did not always make the right choices. At only 15, she became pregnant and was faced with a decision that would change her life forever. In her book, Choose Zoe, Laura shares her story of unplanned teen pregnancy and how she became a pro-life advocate. Laura Lynn Hughes joins us now. Lori, welcome. It's good to have you with us today. Hello, Terry. Yeah, it's just wonderful. I grew up with the 700 Club uh, showing at my house, and my dad would be so excited. And 700 Club was his <laughs> second favorite club because uh, the first was his golf club. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, priorities, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were 15, Lori, when you got pregnant. How did your parents react? My parents were wonderful. Um, I was scared to death to tell them. I thought that they were going to, you know, kill me or hit me, though they never laid a hand on me. And so my mom said, I'm going to tell dad tonight on the way home from the airport that you're pregnant. And so I did what any responsible teenager would do. And I called up my boyfriend. I'm like, come get me. And we hid in the church parking lot. And about 3.30 in the morning, I kept hearing like a baby is a blessing. A baby is a blessing. Because that's what my dad always told me. And so I got the courage to go home and I walk up that long driveway of shame and I uh, put my hand on the doorknob and I was like, please, God, he let my dad be asleep, you know, and I did the sign of the cross. We were raised Catholic. And as soon as I opened the door, like there sat my dad, as always, in his green velvet chair, reading his uh, Bible with his pop bottle glasses on. And I just burst into tears. And my dad walked over to me. And he put his arms around me and he said, mom said that you're going to have a baby and we're too old to raise another child. And all I ask is that you pray every day what's best for that baby, whether you place her in adoptive arms or whether you parent her with our help. And he said, now get to sleep. You have school in a couple of hours. Wow. And I'm telling you, by the time I got to my bedroom, all my unknown fears or made up fears uh, were really gone because of my dad's grace. Why, what a, what a great response from a parent of yeah. a tough situation. 17 years later, your daughter, Erica, that you just talked about giving birth to, also had an unplanned pregnancy, but she chose to abort her child. Tell us what happened and what did you say to her? Well, I did not know. Um, California, there's no parental consent. And so when my daughter told me, it was years later, and um, she told me that, you know, she had had a secret abortion and that she was in a fetal position up until the time. And so I, I was completely shocked and overwhelmed. And I called her immediately. And I said, um, I love you. Um, I read the testimony and we'll talk soon. And I hung up the phone and I just cried. I for about five days, then I was in a fetal position. And I never knew you could um, grieve a grandchild lost to abortion. Yeah. How, and so um, that did, took uh, Erica, quite a process. And then when I was able to talk to her, she had been in Celebrate Recovery. She had been through um, post abortive healing, through the pregnancy clinic, and she was healed. And then that inspired me that I could be healed as well. And so I sought healing for that. And, um, you know, so much redemption has come out of that because together um, we are leaders in a abortion healing and restoration recovery program at our church. And we get to see women uh, restored and healed by going through the studies. And so it's just really exciting to see how God can really take our brokenness and he can put it back um, for the good of others. Well, make it something beautiful. You have counseled so many women with unplanned pregnancies. What do you tell someone who's considering abortion? Well, the first thing I tell them is, you know, my story. And it really gives them a lot of hope. A lot of the young ladies say it changes their perspective when they get to see someone that's gone through it themselves. And I'm happy and I'm whole and I have this great family. 
And, you know, there's just like I said, kind of those unknown fears when you find out that you're pregnant and you're listening to the culture and you're really not focusing on the baby. And so I think the second best thing to do is to help them to focus on the baby, the life within, because they are looking at all of their surrounding circumstances. It's circumstances that take us to abortion clinics. And so if you can speak to those and you can talk to them about, you know, what fears they may have or if they're worried about telling their mom or their boyfriend or worried about being a teen mom or how they'll pay their bills, um, you just begin to like listen to what it is they need and meet them right there. Because every young girl and every woman is different and their needs are all different. And so listening is a very great tactic. And, um, you know, just giving them hope, giving them resources and letting them know that, you know, they've got this child growing within the womb and you can show them fetal development and they're just, their whole life just changes before your eyes. You see them come in kind of scared and then all of a sudden they're, they're joyful. They're, you know, thinking about the child and not just their own life. Yeah. Well, with Roe v. Wade recently overturned, uh, the church is going to need to be ready to support single pregnant women and single moms like never before. What are some practical ways that Christians can help? Yeah, that's that's a really big one, you know, because like of uh, 70% of the women that say that they had their first abortion were attending church at the time. And um, just taking the shame off of that and letting people know like what we want for you is sexual integrity. But if you do become pregnant and you make a different decision, we want you to know that you can come to us and that we will assist you, we will wrap our arms around you. Because I was kicked out of my parochial school and I was not um, welcomed at my church, I was shamed actually. And that was very difficult for me. And so my dream is that that will never happen to any other woman. And it's not saying sex outside of marriage is okay. It's saying now we have a new life and someone's becoming a mom and we have two people here and hopefully the dad. We have a family that we need to disciple and wrap our arms around and welcome them. And so you can throw a baby shower at church, just saying hi to people. I went to church one time after I moved to California and for seven months, no one even looked at me and my daughter. And I would be wondering if there's some young mom there with a child, like what's going on? And you just welcome them like, like anybody else. You know, we all come into church centers saved by grace. And if we just look at people like, um, like we would want to be looked at and show compassion, that goes a long way, just being kind to people and compassionate. So much wisdom in your book. It's called Choose Zoe, a story of unplanned parenthood and the case for life. Zoe meaning life. It's available nationwide. Lori, thank you so much for your candor and for being with us today. Thank you, Terry. Great to have you here.